Hey folks, I am Kevin Ioli. Big fight on Saturday, BMO Stadium in Los Angeles on pay-per-view.com and DAZN.com. You can catch the uh, pound for pound king, Terrence Crawford. He will be moving up, trying for a uh, championship in a fourth weight class as he fights uh, Israel Madrimov. Madrimov is a really good and underrated fighter. Joining me right now to talk about Terrence Crawford and his uh, legendary status, of course, is uh, the longtime voice of HBO Sports, the uh, Boxing Hall of Famer, and now of PayPerView.com, Mr. Jim Lampley. How are you, Jim? Great, Kevin. How are you? I am doing awesome. I appreciate your time. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, you know, especially coming out of that Errol Spence fight, I thought uh, Crawford looked fantastic in that fight. Uh, stopping Errol Spence, uh, raised his record of 40 and 0 with his 31st knockout. Was is he on that same level as some of these legendary welterweights that I've had the great fortune to cover over my career as as you have? Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns, Roberto Duran, Sweet P. Whitaker, Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, Shane Mosley, all these guys that went to the Hall of Fame and we think of as some of the greatest fighters in boxing history. Sometimes I think we maybe underestimate the guys that are in front of our eyes. From your standpoint, how does Terrence Crawford match up with that group of welterweights? Well, it's the nature of the sport that, first of all, he has not matched up against anybody of that caliber in the ring. So uh, you you don't get credit for being as great as other great fighters unless you fight other great fighters. And uh, Ray Leonard is your starting point, logically so. The wonderful thing for Ray Leonard is that his career coincided in such a way with those of Duran and Hearns uh, and Hagler and uh, Donnie Lalonde and a variety of other interesting tests for him. And he got to prove a lot uh, against top-notch opposition. Who has Crawford felt like that? I mean, after what he did to Spence. I don't think anybody put Spence in that category. Uh, you know, Terrence didn't do himself any favors by making Spence look pedestrian, but he did make him look pedestrian and uh, and very easily knocked him out. So uh, it's one of the ironies of the sport that you produce a great performance like that against a supposedly fairly evenly matched opponent and you wipe him out. And all of a sudden, you're not getting as much credit for the victory as you might have thought going in that you were going to get because a lot of people respond automatically saying, ah, well, Spence wasn't really all that, was he? Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, Terrence Crawford's job is to keep going in, keep winning the fights, let history settle the, arg the arguments. Uh, he's unbeaten at this point. You know, right. but not too many people, not too many people figure out a way to walk out of this sport with zero. Uh, at the end of their record, and he's the one right now among major prominent fighters in the sport who has a chance to do that. You know, the one thing that separates Crawford from a lot of fighters active today is his ability to go southpaw and then, and then go back to conventional, and he seems to be equally adept either way. Um, do you recall a fighter, Jim, that was that switched as effortlessly and as often as he did with as much success? No. Uh, it it is his single great distinction tactically, and the the nature of his career makes you wonder. Um, okay, did he start out switching southpaw to create a style variation and give opponents something to think about, and then gradually over a period of time learn that he's an even even stronger puncher with the right hand in front. Uh, and that he can fool opponents into mistakes by switching stances when he does. Now he doesn't go through the chicanery of it anymore. Now he walks out uh, at the beginning of the fight, faces you in his southpaw stance, you know, wears a, a, a graphic, what we call a lower third in television, that says, I now understand that I am a much more formidable and indomitable fighter if I'm in this southpaw stance from the very beginning. Deal with it. Uh, and that's what he did to Spence. We never saw the conventional stance. We never saw the left hand in front. He didn't need that. Why do you think that that, you know, is so successful for him going southpaw? Because there's 
you know, these fighters are great fighters. You know, some of them have fought three, 400 fights. And, you know, when you count their amateur careers, surely they've seen good southpaw fighters before. Why does Crawford succeed at this where at a level, he succeeds at a level that's not other, a lot of other fighters do? Well, um, you know, I'm just sort of surmising because I'm not a fighter and I never did these things uh, in the ring. But uh, at the end of the day, I think what Crawford discovered over time was uh, his best punch is the jab with the right hand. He's got the stronger hand in front. He's got great footwork. He he sets up his attack uh, at angles. He's very difficult to read for opponents coming in. And once he lands that first right jab, he's got you on the defensive. Uh, and he's a pretty doggone good left-hand power puncher, as he showed against Spence. Uh, and, you know, I, it just... It looks on the surface as though Terrence kept making little adjustments, fight to fight, round to round, et cetera, and discovered things about himself that he didn't know. And those discoveries have made him a greater fighter than he was uh, at the beginning. And, and the heart of the matter is, as he showed against Spence in the last fight, I'm not going to mess around with coming out in a conventional stance anymore. I'm a southpaw fighter. I'm coming out to face you with my right hand in front. Deal with it. Interesting. Now, you, um, you know, like me, you know, you've been around covered boxing for a long time. Boxing is one of the few sports where we can actually compare people to the past, right? Because there's weight classes where, like, I, I always thought the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 1970s were the greatest NFL dynasty, but they're, they have some offensive linemen that weighed 245, 250 pounds. It would be running backs right now, right? right. You know, so, the, so the, the sport has changed. But that's not the case in, in boxing where we are in because weight classes. Weight classes. Wins, where right. We've set up a regulation system that makes people equalize over a period of time. So when we look at that, so let, let's just talk more recent. You know, we could go back to Sugar Ray Leonard, but that's, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Let's go back. Let's just go back to Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, two of the legendary welterweights that we, you and I, have both covered uh, their careers extensively. Do you, how do you think Crawford compares to them? Like, would you feel like if a prime Floyd Mayweather was fighting a prime Terence Crawford or Manny Pacquiao versus Terence Crawford, would Crawford be in those fights? Yes, he would definitely be in the fights. Of that, I have zero question. Would he win those fights? We don't know until we see them. Uh, but he's he's probably more stylistically flexible and capable of um, different nuances in the fight within the ring than either Pacquiao or Mayweather, both of whom uh, pretty much relied on doing the same thing all the time and doing it so well that you couldn't stop it. Mayweather's defense and counterpunching, too good to beat. Uh, Pacquiao's power and dynamism, usually too much for the opponents that he fought in his weight class. Uh, Crawford can do either of those two things and more. And, and so he's capable of making decisions during the fight that come from a broader, deeper envelope than what uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao uh, were able to, to bring and develop. Does that make him a better fighter? Not necessarily. He wasn't fighting the same opponents, so we don't get to make a, uh, a direct comparison. But all we know is that at this moment um, in his league, and the league so far has been welterweight, he's untouchable, he's unbeatable, he's incomparable. People who thought the Spence fight was going to be a pick and fight were wrong. Yeah, exactly. A couple other things. Um you know, you heard about Floyd Mayweather, the great defensive fighter. You know, there was people, which I always thought was kind of laughable comparing him to Willie Pep, right? I don't think that was, you know, but there were people that wanted to say when they were trying to figure out how good Mayweather was, they wanted to say, okay, Willie Pep. But Mayweather, we know, was, was a great fighter. But, you know, you don't hear people talk about Terrence Crawford's defense all that much. But how often have you ever seen Terrence Crawford take a flush shot? He's an all-around fighter. There is, there is nothing in the ring. There is no skill or part of the skill set, as it were, that Crawford doesn't have. He can right. be a power puncher. He can be a, he can be a power puncher out of either stance, conventional stance or southpaw stance. Now he's just doing it uh, out of southpaw all the time. Uh, he, can, he can be a cutie defender. Uh, he can embarrass you and, and make you play a game of touch and look foolish reaching for him. 
just the way Mayweather was often able to do. Uh, he can attack you and blow you away the way we saw Pacquiao do uh, against many different opponents. So um, Terrence Crawford defies any limitation or any absolutes in fans or reporters' descriptions of him. There's nothing based on everything we've seen so far. We don't know what it is that Terrence Crawford can't do. We only know all of the many different things that he can do and do well. I think he's going to have a challenge on uh, Saturday, and a lot of people don't in the United States don't know Israel Madrimov. Uh, he is 10-0-1, holds a, uh, the 154-pound um, championship. A lot of people aren't aware of him. In March when he fought in Saudi Arabia, you had an interesting observation, and you said he reminded you of Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. Um, and so I, I just want to maybe get you to expand on it. I'm sure you've watched a few of his fights as you prepare uh, for Saturday's show. Um, how do you think Madrimov stacks up against Crawford? And what is the biggest challenge that Madrimov's going to face in trying to fight a guy who is as confident and successful as Terrence Crawford is right now? Sure. Challenge number one for Madrimov is to land a meaningful punch. Challenge number one for Crawford is, if that happens, can he take the meaningful punch? Uh, you know, Madrimov, logic suggests, based on what we know about weight differences and gradu graduating up the weight scale, logic suggests that if Madrimov can deliver a fully balanced on-target power shot, that might be the biggest punch that Crawford has ever had to take. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and at that moment, you know, you learn something because everything is a mystery uh, until it happens. So we may very well learn... Um, Saturday night, or at least get a stronger sense of what are the limits of uh, Terrence Crawford's ability to take a punch, and is Madrimov able to meaningfully test those limits? In a way, it looks as though Crawford's betting that he can and that he's hoping for it, because I think part of what Terrence Crawford wants to happen here is that he unequivocally answers the question of whether he can take a punch from a fully prepared and vested power puncher at 154 pounds and begin looking all the way up the scale to the dollars that pile up in front of Canelo Alvarez if he gets a chance to face it. And so you read my mind because that was my next question. Uh, Canelo Alvarez on September 14th going to fight Edgar Berlanga, a fight that I'm not crazy about, Jim. The headline, the first word in the headline on my story about that fight was boo. So I, I was not too crazy about seeing Ed, Edgar you Berlanga. You probably think it's a craft mismatch. Right. Yeah, it, I think it's a mismatch a, because Berlanga hasn't hasn't beating beaten a quality fighter. He hasn't correct. fought a quality fighter, and now he's correct. fighting the. You know, I know he lost the IBF title, but to me, he's still the undisputed champion. Do you feel? Let, let's ask you this about Crawford. Let's assume, for the sake of argument, he gets past Madrimov, and I know that's a big leap forward here. And and Croft and Canelo big also has. But do you yeah. think that that is the uh, the smart fight to make? His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh is saying that he is going to talk to Canelo and try to make that uh, make that fight next. Do you believe that that is a smart fight for uh, uh, Terence Crawford to take? Shoot the moon! It's the most money, and it's the biggest possible enhancement to his reputation. Go ahead and beat Terence Crawford. Shoot the moon. You've, you've done everything you said you could do so far. You've defied a lot of people's expectations for you. Go ahead and take the biggest risk, collect the biggest paycheck. And if you win, you've made your point again. If you don't win, hey, you were fighting Canelo Alvarez and he's a 168 pound fighter and you had never been higher than 154. So, you know, you've got um, an explanation if it all goes wrong uh, and you've got Sky's the limit if it all goes right. So I'm going to ask you one last question about the card, and I know I didn't warn you this in advance, but I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Andy Ruiz, the former heavyweight champion, is on this card. He's fighting Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Um, you know, right now in the heavyweight division, uh, a lot of good stuff going on at the top. Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. Uh, anything that you see in Andy Ruiz, uh, anything you expect from Andy Ruiz that would suggest he could fight his way back into that conversation? Well, he's he's at an, another moment, and I say another moment because he's been here before, when he's on the verge of being written off as uh, as meaningful, um, and that may or may not be justified uh, based on what he has done 
since his big moment, his mark in the sport, which was his upset victory over uh, Anthony Joshua that gave him uh, a, a heavyweight title. He's, a, he's an American Hispanic heavyweight. Uh, it's arguably the most propitious identity in the sport if you can make it work for you. Uh, and and so he's got one more chance, and he's still an unusual physical specimen. He's sturdy. Uh, he's, he's big. Uh, his arms are longer than his frame would suggest, and he has hand speed. He has absolutely inexplicable uh, hand speed. So uh, that advantage is still there for him. And, you know, if he can go in Saturday night and make it work one more time, he sets himself up for another possible large paycheck. And, you know, with Joshua, you never know what's going to happen. Yet I think you know what you get from Fury and Music, and right. they're going to probably deal with each other again. But uh, Joshua's there, and that might create yet another opportunity for Andy Ruiz. That is Jim Lampley, the Hall of Famer. You can catch him. I want to mention this on the broadcast. Uh, if you buy it on pay-per-view.com, uh, Jim will be chatting live with you guys uh, along with Lance Pugmire and Dan Canobio. So you want to take advantage of that. Really a, a good value add by pay-per-view.com. Jim, I appreciate your brother. Uh, good luck to you. Enjoy the fight on Saturday. And can I ask you one question before I go? Of course. Who's your favorite Andy Ruiz versus Daniel Dubois? I, I think at this stage I would favor Dubois. And the reason I would favor Dubois, Dubois' chin sometimes a little bit questionable, right? And we've seen that. I thought his last fight um, against Hergovic that he really stepped up. And I liked uh, I liked what I saw out of Dubois in that Her Hergovic fight. I think he's in tough with Anthony Joshua uh, coming up on in September. But I think right now what I've seen from Ruiz, I cannot count on him to be in the kind of fighting shape he needs to be in to deal with an athlete like Daniel Dubois. If Dubois were able to get past Joshua, I think it would make sense for him to take an Andy Ruiz fight. Uh, mm -hmm. He'd be favored, and uh, he could call the the equation monetarily. So, uh, you know, that's not outside the realm of possibility. Uh, it's a division in which anything could happen. Thank you very much for providing me with useful background information, Kevin. There we go. Jim Lampley, everybody. Appreciate it.